Hi there, this is Dr. Noel. In today's video, you will learn the methodology in pipe sizing and pump selection. This brief overview must be used together with the materials and notes in CP5098 Chemical Engineering Design and Calculation. So the first method is to select the material of construction. In selecting the material of construction, you need to use appropriate criteria. So you have to make it very brief here. State what are the materials were considered as the material of construction, what criteria were used, and then finally state what is the final selected material of construction and provide the brief explanation. Second step is where you need to determine the optimum diameter or sometimes it's called economical diameter using appropriate correlation or rule of thumb. Some of the correlation uh, that you can use, for example, uh, the first correlation is widely used in oil refining. So this is the correlation. Another correlation that uh, you might can use is the second one. Uh, where if the material of construction is A106 carbon steel and then the flow regime is turbulent flow and then the diameter, the inner diameter is between 25 to 200 mm then you can use this correlation to determine the optimum diameter. And then of course there are many other correlation. One thing that you need to take note is the different line because you'll be designing the suction line and also the discharge line, you need to uh, make some assumption or use rule of thumb on uh, what should be the difference between the suction line and the discharge line. If you are assuming that the suction line and the discharge line uh, use the same uh, inner diameter, yes, you can use that assumption or more appropriately, the suction line will be using a larger diameter than the discharge line so that the discharge line will have higher velocity. So uh, what's the ratio between the suction line uh, inner diameter and the discharge line diameter? That is what you need to uh, find out about the appropriate rule of thumb. The next step is to determine the minimum wall thickness of the pipe. So the minimum wall thickness is equal to the design thickness. The design thickness is the thickness required to withstand the pressure difference between the pressure inside the pipe and the pressure outside the pipe, plus the corrosion allowance. In the context of piping, the corrosion allowance is usually 1.6 millimeter. And then step number four, Using the result in number two and number three, you need to select the standard pipe size, okay, the nominal pipe size and schedule number based on the standard steel pipe. In CP5098, the standard uh, steel pipe can be found in Appendix A. Now, step number five is where you need to calculate velocity and Reynolds number and the pressure drop in that pipe. Okay, you have to calculate the velocity, Reynolds number and the pressure drop in that pipe. If the calculated pressure drop is less than 0 0.5 kilopascal per meter and then the Reynolds number meet the requirement, for example, if uh, the requirement to use the rule of thumb is for turbulent flow, then the Reynolds number that you calculate in step 5 must be turbulent flow also. Then if the pressure drop in the pipe and the Reynolds number meet the requirement, then you can accept the pipe dimension in number 4. If not, then you have to change the pipe dimension until you obtain the pressure drop to be lower than 0 0.5 kilopascal per meter and uh, acceptable Reynolds number. Step number six is where you have to draw, establish 
the piping and instrument diagram okay from the uh, the pipeline that you want to design okay and then at the same time you also draw or establish the piping isometric in the piping isometric you include all the elevation uh, the liquid height and also the pressure okay the pressure in point one and point two uh, one brief example of an isometric drawing here as you can see uh, in this isometric drawing, the students wanted to do uh, pipe sizing between the storage tank here and then the point before the fluid enters the fired heater. Okay, so the student established the isometric drawing and then indicate all the instrumentation, all the pipe fittings, uh, all the change in elevation so on and so forth so uh, to draw a good piping isometric and also to determine the liquid height and pressure all this right you have to refer to a good uh, handbook okay uh, where some of the rule of thumbs are provided there and also some of the standard that you need to follow for example uh, if the storage tank is for storing flammable chemicals, what should be the uh, minimum distance between the storage tank and the process area? Okay, so after you have drawn the PNID and the piping isometric drawing, now we will know all the pipe fittings, all the valves, the instrumentations that established inside that line. So. The next step is to calculate the total friction loss. Okay, the total friction loss uh, in the pipe, in the pipe fittings, in the valves, in the instrumentation, uh, both in the suction line and the discharge line. After you have calculated the total friction loss, step number nine is where you can determine the pump work. Uh, you can determine the pump work by applying Bernoulli's equation. Okay, by applying Bernoulli's equation at the two end point. Okay, at the two end point. So if I use this isometric as an example, so uh, the first, the starting point will be the liquid height in the storage tank, and then the end point here will be where the uh, fluid enters the fire heater. And then you use the friction loss that you have calculated in step number eight. That will be the total friction loss throughout the line and also the pressure difference at the starting point. Okay, starting point like in this uh, example is the pressure on the surface of the liquid in the storage tank and the pressure at the end point. So in this case will be the pressure where the uh, fluid enters the fire heater. Okay, uh, you also need to take a, into account the difference in velocity if your uh, if you are using different diameters for the uh, for the suction line and for the discharge line. If your suction line and discharge line has the same diameter, therefore there's no difference in the velocity. So after you have calculated the pump work, step number 10 is where you can determine the net pressure suction head available in the suction line. And then using the uh, calculated result in step number 9 and step number 10 then you can continue to do the pump selection so in this module uh, we will focus in using centrifugal pump so you can select centrifugal pump uh, by browsing a pump manufacturer website okay and then select the pump that can uh, deliver the required work that you have calculated in step number nine and also have a net pressure suction head uh, required higher 
than the net pressure suction had available. Okay, then you have to show the uh, pump performance curve. You have to show the pump performance curves of the pump that you have selected. And then you have to indicate in that pump performance curve the normal operating line and the maximum operating line. Maximum operating line is whereby the flow rate is 1.2 times the normal mass flow rate. Uh, then with this, you are able to indicate that the pump that you have selected will be able to meet the required normal operating and the maximum operating. So with this uh, overview, I hope you will be able to do uh, pipe sizing and pump selection. Thank you.